Hi everyone. This is all painting and stuff. And my name is Bob. And what you're watching is an oil painting I started uh, many moons ago. It is a castle in Europe. I got this image off of pixabay.com and in that pixabay.com this image is called Mansion. In previous videos we did the blocking in of this painting and then we did the sky and then moving forward we did the background hills and in this episode we are painting the buildings now when I do a all painting such as this, I move from my background towards the foreground. That's why I did the sky first. Then over the top of that, I added the background hills. And now I'm doing the buildings. And then probably the next video, I'll finish up doing the foreground being the road and the bushes. So sit back and uh, Please enjoy this video. If you uh, care to, just advance it to where you need to. And please enjoy. Now, right now, I'm uh, trying to put in the cracks on the rock face of this structure. It seems like in this building complex, the build all these structures up against a, a hillside and then once those structures were put in place they added the road this seems to be a, a very rocky region Maybe there is uh, some way I can uh, find out where this building complex is located. Right now I'm using a zero 
Master's Touch script liner and I'm putting in the indication of the roofing rose. It's a fine line. I'm using quite a bit of odorless mineral spirits with black paint. You have to uh, watch how much you, mineral spirits you use because you dilute the uh, pigment of the paint. I'm sorry if my uh, hand gets in your way. I've been uh, really pleased with the uh, quality of these Master's Touch paintbrushes. They are uh, somewhat inexpensive. They don't seem to hold a point as long as your more expensive all painting brushes. But I like these brushes in that they're not as stout as most all painting brushes. But I'm really pleased with these brushes. I'm using uh, the Hobby Lobby Master's Touch canvas, as I mentioned previously. And I haven't found anything wrong with their quality on their canvas panels. I have noticed that uh, when you buy packs of three, you cannot see the condition of the panels inside the package. And I have run across a few in the past that uh, if I was able to see them through the th shrink packaging, I probably would not have purchased them. But all in all, I've really been pleased with these canvas panels. I've painted on uh, eight by tens and twelve by twenty four. They're a good value. Please uh, leave a comment about this music that uh, overlaid on this video. What I like uh, is not necessarily what my audience likes to hear. Uh, one other way to do this is just for me to just explain what I'm doing 
and leave the music out of this. Once I've got uh, a particular color in my brush, I have a tendency to jump around a bit. <laughs> Another thing I try to do is, being that I'm right-handed, I kind of like to work from my top left corner of my painting and work across to my right. That way, I'm not dealing with uh, sticking my hand in wet paint. This uh, Griffin oil paint by Windsor Newton, I've stated in the past that uh, this Al-Qaeda oil paint dries overnight. And please believe me when I say it dries overnight, it does. One thing about the alkyd medium in this paint, it uh, it does have an odor to it, and if you're not used to it, it can be uh, quite odorous. So you need plenty of ventilation. I've been using it for months now and uh, I think I might have gotten used to it, but I do uh, paint in a well ventilated area. Now what you see me doing now is painting a uh, small fence structure in between the buildings. I imagine that is quite a drop off. Again, sorry if about the hand getting in your way. Now, what I'm painting right now, I could probably take that mall stick away because everything under my hand is dry. But what the mall stick does is that I may forget where I place my hand. So I just sooner use that mole stick all the time 
and then putting my hand on wet paint is no longer an issue. Now this canvas is sitting on top of my drawing board that can be elevated and it's sitting at about a 20 degree angle and over top of that I've got a vinyl tablecloth that I cut the size and this drawing board is 16 inches by 24 inches. It's 16 inches high. And this mull stick uh, rests over top of the drawing board. It's no, not contacting the canvas in any way. To the left hand you see my towel. That's a Viva towel that I wipe my dirty brushes on prior to picking up a different color paint I like using uh, Viva towels in that they are lint-free. And right now I'm trying to paint in the different rock structures on this building's wall. They, or I have said that uh, normally in oils you work from uh, dark to light well, I somewhat drift away from that in that uh, coming forward in your picture, which seems to be the reasonable thing to do. Um, the beauty about oil is that you're not, you don't necessarily have to uh, follow that rule verbatim in that wall on the uh, slope structure there uh, I have some darker paint down and then I filled in those areas with lighter paint and then later on I'll probably go back with a darker paint and put it over the white for lighter colors so I don't always practice what I preach but uh, I paint every day probably for about four to six hours And in those uh, times I paint, I find what I can do and what I can't do. Uh, what is the best way to do something and, and with this constant practicing you become better and better.
some people uh, have a hard time with the issue of why can't I do this better? Well, the, the answer to that is you can't take weeks off and then come back to a, a project and expect to get any better. Uh, I'm very fortunate in that I'm a retired person and I can devote this kind of hours to this project. But I didn't really get into uh, serious painting and drawing until I retired. And then I devoted uh, a lot more time to this. And I understand why uh, you have, well, let's just say life gets in the way. You have uh, other obligations that you got to fulfill. And I can understand that, but uh, please understand why you just can't become very good at this if you can't put in the time. So what I'm trying to say is do what you can and please be satisfied with what you can do. When I have a brush in my hand, it's not about the color, it's about the brush I am currently using. There's no sense in putting down that brush in that this is a script liner and it puts down a fine line. So regardless of the color, I'm going to use that brush, whether it be a dark value or a light value, because I can put it a very fine line with this script liner. And this oil paint being rather viscous, you have to add mineral spirits to it to get it down to the consistency that uh, you can actually use this script liner. Uh, with this script liner, you could not take your standard oil paint and put down a thin line like this. You'd have to dilute the pigment load
right now I'm uh, putting in the little cracks and crevices on this stone wall. On the next video, uh, I'll be doing the uh, finish up work, the shrubbery in the foreground. There's a big cherry tree right underneath my hand there on the right margin of the picture and that'll be the last side of my paint because it's very close to the foreground and it's on top of everything else so let me ask before this video is over that uh, you please subscribe and give this a video a like and I hope you're doing well until we meet again bye now